big thing is healthcare costs. Healthcare costs go up really fast. Healthcare inflation is growing at a rate that is faster than the economy grows or than any other price grows. And so that is why we have tens of trillions of dollars of unfunded liabilities. That's why these programs are going bankrupt. And that is why we have to address these programs. It's the biggest contributor to our debt in the future. Now, when you take a look at debt, everybody has debt. Debt's not an unknown thing. We've had it for centuries. The, what matters really is how much debt you have relative to how much income you have. When you get a mortgage, what matters is your ability to pay the mortgage. How much money do you make pretty much determines how much house you buy. It's not that different for governments. It also matters is who are you borrowing the money from? Well, 1970, our debt wasn't that big. 95% of our borrowing came from ourselves. People bought treasury bills. 5% of our debt came from other countries. Well, 1990, our debt got a little bit bigger. 81% of our borrowing came from ourselves. 19% came from other countries. Now, our debt is a whole lot larger. And 47% of our debt, our borrowing comes from other countries. China, number one, Japan, number two. For every dollar Washington spends today, 42 cents out of that dollar is borrowed money. So we're borrowing 42 cents, and about half of that is from other countries. Friends, this is not sustainable. You can't keep relying on other countries to cash flow a lot of your government. We are losing control of our destiny, our sovereignty, and when we rely on countries that don't necessarily have our best interests in mind, that is a dangerous position to be putting ourselves in. Now, as I mentioned before, we've had debt in the past. And we've had big debt in the past. During World War II, this shows you where our debt has been. Down here, World War II, our debt went as high as the entire size of our economy. For every dollar we made in America, we borrowed a little bit more um, to fight World War II. We mostly sold war bonds to ourselves, but then our debt went back down to reasonable levels. Went up a little bit for the Cold War, and it went to reasonable levels. This is where the Congressional Budget Office is telling us our debt is headed. Our debt is literally going to go off on a, on a tear. It is really a crushing burden of debt that the government is telling us. These are not my numbers, these are the Congressional Budget Office. Jan and I live in Janesville. We've got three kids who are six, seven, and nine years old. By the time they're my age, the debt will be at least twice as big as our economy. So for every dollar everybody makes in America, the government is scheduled to borrow two or three dollars. We can't keep doing this. I mean, what the economists tell us is once your debt gets to about 60% of your economy, you're getting into a dangerous area. When you get to 90% of your economy, that is when your economy really starts slowing down. That's when you start losing jobs, economic growth dries up. Well, we are already on schedule by the end of the decade surpassing that moment, that tipping point of 90%. I asked the Congressional Budget Office uh, to run the numbers, forecast the American economy going forward, given this path that we are on. And they have this sophisticated computer program that measures our economy going forward. The entire program crashes in the year 2037 because it can't conceive of a way in which the U.S. economy can continue with this kind of burden of debt. This is what we're doing to the next generation, but it's also what we're doing to this generation. Because every big deficit you run today, it's $1.6 trillion, simply means another tax increase or an interest rate increase tomorrow. So it's really putting a chilling effect on economic growth and activity. And so this is, of all things, the issues we've got to deal with. And the sooner we act, the better off we are. So what I want to, if there's anything I, I can get to you, the sooner we deal with this problem, the more we can do it on our own terms. We can do it the way we want to do it. We won't have the credit market telling us how to do it. We won't be in a debt crisis. This is what the General Accountability Office measures called the fiscal gap. GAO is Congress's accountant, the auditing arm of Congress. Two years ago, they told us our fiscal gap was $62.9 trillion. I don't know what just happened. Hey, Chad, are you around? I can't even see that. Um, now, they're telling us the fiscal gap is, last year, is $76.4 trillion. Today, that fiscal gap is 